want to see your red light. I saw something blinking. Yeah. That was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Neighborhood Association. Association. Yes. Oh. And so, sir, are you here for any particular reason? Yes, I was uh, hoping to uh, make a few comments, if uh, if I may, uh, regarding uh, what I understand is on the agenda tonight. Um, acceptance of oh, Cook, Cook Avenue. Avenue. Okay, great. Good. Okay, so... Um, I move that we hold off on that until we do the minutes, minutes, etc., and then move that to the top of the agenda. Okay. Can you second for that? I'll second that. Okay. Great. Um, would anybody like to propose um, the minutes of November 13th, Board of Public Works for approval? So moved. Second. Any comments? Mike, he didn't have any comments. Oh, he had comments. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no comments. Oh, no, no comments. Okay. One typo. One typo. Oh, not typo. No. Uh, <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any negatives? Okay. And your name? My name is Stanley Kachapsky. K O C H A P S K I. Okay, nice to meet you. And um, you want to talk about um, the street hearing acceptance? So I think we'll have you guys. I'm sorry, I missed the meeting. Oh, oh, no, that was I, think, I think all we're doing is setting the date for this. Okay. This one. Yeah. All right, so if I can explain to the board what happened with this, um, we were approached by the Moose Club, as I put it, Stan, about. Uh, Cook Avenue, the portion of that runs from Hatfield Street to the dead end, which is also known as Boggy Meadow Road. Mm -hmm. So we started pulling out some files, and we found out that there was a public hearing done in 1992 by the Board of Public Works, um, and that's where the process stopped, as far as we can tell. The plan that was provided by Huntley Associates for recording was never recorded at the Registry of Deeds. The City Council does not have a record of street acceptance for this portion. And we do have two public ways off the street, Emily Lane and Pines Edge. So we're going to move forward through the process to make this portion of Cook Avenue that we thought was always a public way, truly a public way. So I've asked that we set a meeting date for a public hearing, hopefully before our next board meeting. Um, procedurally, is that the best way to go? Is that the most expeditious way to go? Unless the board wants to, well, we have to have 10 days public notice to the abutters, so we have 70-something certified mails we have to send out to the abutters because of the condominium project, so it's going to be a few days to put all those together. So I think the next board meeting is reasonable timing for the next for the public hearing. Do you, um, Ned, do you foresee uh, any problem? No, we have public water, I mean... There's public water, there's storm drains, there's sewer, it's paved as curving, it's it's even bounded like it's a public way with stone bounds and pins. It's already something well, happened in ninety two to this fell through the cracks. Fell through the cracks. Okay. I can't explain what happened. Cool. All right. Good. So is it appropriate to do it on the eighteenth before the board meeting? I, guess I, I think so. Like okay. like that. I guess I didn't. Yeah. Is, is, is that agreeable to everyone? We'll have a public a hearing meeting on Cook Avenue on uh, at 4:45 for December the 18th. Mm -hmm. Next, and uh, ten, business. ten business days. I believe that's correct. That so to do they would all have to go out tomorrow. You get your work done. Is that doable? But that's our last meeting. Yeah, see, because yeah. then we're into January. Yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. okay. It's and fine with me, but. And this is 
I mean, uh, the big question is going to be whether or not we plow it. Right. And we're not right. going to not plow it because it's on the way to plowing things that we're obligated to plow. Gary? I just want to suggest that maybe we should have it on a Saturday morning, even though it's only one, but holding it at 445, I dark? think <laughs> two weeks from now this isn't going to be any better than it was tonight as far as reading off a piece of paper or recognizing, mm -hmm. recognizing <laughs> faces. Well, the advantage we had tonight was that uh, we had already yes. visited. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. knew what we were talking about. Yes. Yeah. I think Gary's right. Um, or maybe even earlier. I don't know if we could do it at 4.15 or something. I don't know. Okay. So, well, the, 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 hmm? the, yeah, yeah, so sure. the public hearings, the board does not need to have a quorum there. Mm -hmm. It's strictly a public hearing. It can be managed by one board member, mm -hmm. not necessarily five to seven. Mm -hmm. Just so you're aware of that. Okay. So I want to revisit BJ. Do you, do you think it's possible for you to get the uh, public hearing information out? within 10 days for December the 18th. December the 18th. Okay. Um, so that's exact. You said it would have to happen yeah. tomorrow. It would have to happen yeah, tomorrow. So is that feasible? Um, seven days later, please? I'm not sure. And is, yeah. there, oh, is there that degree of urgency? Yeah. My sense is that there's not. So yeah. let's, yeah, I would suggest that we schedule it for some Saturday morning. Yeah. The only problem and we take it up at the first meeting in January. The only problem we have is we're getting into the, you know the holiday season and blah blah blah. Well, well the Bible is going to be after the holiday season. Yeah. <coughs> well, <laughs> Saturday, January fourth, in advance of our January eighth. Mm -hmm. I think that's a grand idea. I think so too. Okay, so does everybody agree that we'll schedule a public hearing date for? Um, Cook Avenue on January the 4th and be prepared to talk about it at the January 8th meeting. Yeah, uh, Is that there? acceptable? Okay. Excuse me. Does that work? Sure. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Kuchinski. Kuchinski. Kuchinski, excuse me. Um, did you have any further comment? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> whenever you're going to be discussing for uh, that portion of uh, Cook Avenue that uh, what is it exactly that you're trying to do? I'm not familiar with exactly what the intent is of, of the uh, Cook Avenue discussion. I'm concerned with the upper end of it, uh, which is also known as Boggy Meadow Road. Um, uh, Mr. Huntley knows exactly what I'm up against. Uh, and I'm, I've been uh, maintaining Boggy Meadow Road for the last eight years or so, you know, plowing it and repairing it whenever the potholes got to be too bad. And I'm wondering if uh, that can't be included as uh, a public way, at least up to gate number one, which is the actual sort of main entrance to the Fitzgerald Lake uh, Conservation Area. I've got some maps that show that and everything, but I'm, I'm sure that this is not the appropriate time to present them, I don't believe, unless you want to look at what I've brought along. It doesn't Let matter. Let me consult with staff. Is the portion that Mr. Kachatsky um, talking about um, on the public way proposal? The public way proposal in 1992 does not include the extension that he's looking for. So if he could relate to you about the issues up there with the conservation land and public parking on the property, which I'm not quite sure whether it's City Conservation Land parking on, on, on their property, or it's on the Moose Club property? Nobody seems to know uh, who Boggy Meadow Road belongs to. Uh, I mean, I've asked a lot of people at City Hall and everything, and everybody says it's private property, but I believe that it belongs to the city, you know. Uh, actually, Cook Avenue used to be called Boggy Meadow Road. That was the original name, all the way from Hatfield Street, in fact, all the way from up into the conservation area down to Connecticut. There's a letter that George Quinn um, uh, wrote to uh, Peter McNulty a few years back that uh, pretty much uh, laid out what he thought the city should refer to for uh, then on as to where Cook Avenue began, how wide it was, where it extended to, and uh, what portion of Boggy Meadow Road uh, was connected to it and how it related. So there's a, there's 
there's a lot of information that I've gathered over the last six months or so because I've been trying to get um, the city to accept uh, maintenance of uh, Volumetal Road at least, like I said, up to uh, gate number one. Uh, that it's shown on uh, on the maps and everything. Uh, right now, <clears throat> if I if I may, <clears throat> uh, the Broadbrook Coalition uses a strip of land uh, which is called Boggy Meadow Road after it gets into the uh, Moose Lodge parking lot area. They use it to park their vehicles. They're supposed to hug the tree line all the way up to this uh, uh, gate one. Uh, and that's where they're supposed to be parked whenever they want to use uh, the upper uh, land there for whatever recreation purposes, whatever. But in order to get out of those parking spaces, there's only one way that you can get out of those parking spaces once you pull up along that tree line, and that's a trespass into the Moose Lodge parking lot. Uh, they've got no problem with that. I mean, I, they've been doing it for years, and I don't, I don't really much care about it. And like I say, I've been plowing uh, that area so that they can get in there and park in the wintertime and everything, too. And uh, maintaining it somewhat, but it's gotten to the point where it needs some gravel or something to be dumped into the um, <coughs> potholes that are up there. They're in tough shape now. You know, somebody's going to break an axle just pulling into that area. Like that. And uh, I'd like to see that included in whatever's happening here with Cook Avenue at this time so that that could be declared a uh, public way. I've got a map that says that it's a public way and, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know whether that anything that's ever been registered. I, I'm not sure that it uh, ever was brought to the registry and, and uh, recorded, you know. Since we've gotten into this so far, mm -hmm. would it be all right if we took a minute and looked at his plan so oh, we could sure. see what he's referring to? Yeah. And while you're getting that out, Mr. Chair, I want to ask Ned, Ned, um, from what you said, part of Coach Road appear to already be ready to be a public way. But did that include the portion that Mr. Uh, no. uh, oh, Kachatsky I have no problem entertaining the discussion of extending Cook Avenue, but I think the planning board needs to be involved with this and maybe the Conservation Commission as it is their property. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what he's after is having the city maintain what City Conservation Commission is using that he's currently doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where the property lines are up there once they leave what I know is Cook Avenue. Mm -hmm. Are these cars parked on the Musco park property actually, or are they on the conservation land property? Uh, All right. To get that in. Well, I, I, I could start off by uh, showing you a letter from George Quinn that kind of uh, describes his idea of what uh, Cook Avenue and uh, Boggy Meadow Road consists of. Maps here that I don't know. The map I gave you? No, th these are from the registry. Uh, okay. These are different. According to that date, it was 1990. Uh, pass these around if you uh, would like to and take a look at them. This is, uh, this is the area that I'm concerned with here, where uh, Cook Avenue uh, comes up to the Actually, right here is the uh, Moose Lodge property right here. That mm -hmm. This is the actual Moose Lodge location, and this point right here is what's known as Gate 1 leading up to the uh, Fitzgerald Lake property. That's uh, better shown right here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is actually so that's the moose property. The yeah, this is the moose property right here. So and Cook Avenue stops at the corner of the moose property. Well, that's questionable. I'm going to show it going into the property uh, somewhat. Um, so this is the Moose Lodge property. 
this was actually Cook Avenue. This is the part that runs down behind the big wine and comes up to Jackson Street. But everything on the other side of Hatfield Street used to be known as Boggy Meadow Road. That's leading up to uh, here. So that's coming up this way here, this direction. If you had those two maps together, they would overlap like so. You know. Anyway, uh, you, you can kind of look over and see this one here. Boggy Meadow Road is identified as a public road, um, and that's, of course, again, the most large property right there. Now, Cookie Avenue um, supposedly at this point was 40 feet wide, but I think that letter... 49.5. Um, yeah, that letter... 49.5. Yeah, see, there's, a, there's a discrepancy in a, in a lot of the uh, maps and the literature that I have on there. Uh, and you can see right here, this drawing shows Cook Avenue being wider at this point, but then this is actually the property line right about here for the Moose Lodge. It reduces down by, um, I think it was 10 feet. I don't remember correctly. The rotating feet. north can yeah. drive you crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can see it better on that one there. I think it, sh it shows that there's a 10 foot. Difference. Dimension it's mentioned that when they did um, Pine's Edge here, see that section right there? They had to give 557 square feet right to developers. So the Pine's feet. Edge had to 40 feet donate feet. some land here to the city to make that so they're trying to width as they want that road, at that approach. <clears throat> so this is the post plan right. that went so, to. Okay, so make. Um, so this is the proposed plan that was created in 92 or so to go to city council for approval. Right, that's and they had the public hearing as far as I can tell and the city clerk records also show that information but from there who knows what Gone. happened. Right. We don't have the mylars. We don't know where the mylars are. So all we have is this paper copy of a plan. Isn't that what you're supposed to tell the mylars? <laughs> Probably make, don't make current recording standards today. So, this is what was proposed to be done to accept Cook Avenue, and there is a there's a letter from George Quinn about what we should accept and why, and his research of how he created this what this plan was developed from that. And the, is that the letter that you gave us? Yes, yes. Gary, I okay. think, has it on any that yeah. drawing. Right but that, and so letter. does he refer at all to the <coughs> upper um, portion? He refers it up then? to here, just as Pines just, Edge and South. Just, just so we have a public way here, Emma Lane, we have Pines Edge, which is a public uh -huh. way. Uh -huh. And I talked to uh, yeah, Mr. Skibiski, yeah, John Skibiski, well, who's uh, on a butter. Mm -hmm. I ran into him um, the other day. Right, 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 right. He was telling yeah, me he was, at, I don't know if you he was at that public. Could you all call Mr. Ned, please? So I ran into John Skibiski, who's in a butter. He was at that public hearing. Mm -hmm. and apparently it was quite contentious at that time because of Pine's Edge and the condominium project. Yeah, so. And so I don't know why this plan didn't move forward, but that mm -hmm. was the proposal was to make this the public way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. So, and then what were you guys talking about? Uh, I, I have a um, detailed map from uh, the Broadbrook Coalition. It's a little pamphlet that they put out mm -hmm. for uh, their members or anybody that uh, there's like a bulletin board there as you enter mm -hmm. that area. You probably familiar with. Yes. And it identifies the, the location of that gate one that I just. That's what, the current, what we were looking at. What he would like to do is extend it this way to gate one, is what he would like to do. Oh, right. yeah. oh okay. I, this, this is sort of interesting. I, there's a little bit of evidence there where on their document. The, 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 the registry doesn't have that. Man. I know they don't. <laughs> I'd like to sit down with Sarah Lavalley and Wayne Fighting at the 
planning office okay. and see what they have for recommendations to do up there. I still think we should move forward with what we have mm -hmm. that we're looking at originally doing in 1992, mm -hmm. uh, complete that process, and if we look at extending it, it's just another formality we need to go through. Okay, Chris? Uh, no, I was just, yeah, you know, I was going to follow up with Ned about what he thought was the appropriate way to move forward. And then my next question was going to be, uh, Mr. Kachaski, which is, you know, what, what's your perfect outcome? What do you, what do you really want us to do? Well, I'd like to see that uh, portion of uh, Monumental Road uh, declared a public way in conjunction with whatever you're doing with Cook Avenue now. Uh, I think it's listed on some of those maps as a public way, and that way the city would uh, at least be obligated to plow it and maybe uh, repair it or keep it in some kind of condition where people could uh, park there reasonably and not expect to get a broken uh, axle or something on their vehicle. Well, I can, I can say right off the top, um, we may be able to plow, but as far as um, well, that would be kind of up any to sort of uh, updates. Well, unless you know, uh, the Broadwood Coalition would take a load of gravel and dump it up there, they're the ones that use it. Actually, I mean, they're the they're the people that. Of course, it's open to the public, so you know, it's really uh, right. it's not only the Broadwood Coalition. Yeah, and and I'm not I'm not trying to be a dick about it, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that you know we have lots of demands on infrastructure upgrades and they fall into the criteria of what are the highest priorities and this probably wouldn't wouldn't be one of them. Um, well like I said I've been plowing it for all these years. Yeah. I guess uh, that's not you know the end of the world if I gotta keep on plowing it. I gotta go in there to plow the, the parking lot for the, um, uh, the lodge Although I had a tenant up there, and they recently moved out, so nobody's in there right now. So I, I don't have to be too particular about the plowing. Yeah. So why don't I recommend this? We'll move forward with establishing what we originally have always thought was a public way mm -hmm. and going through that process. I'll sit down with the planning uh, department and Sarah LaValle Conservation Commission, try to get an idea of where these property lines are, whether it's city land, that mm -hmm. is the issue. If it is, we don't really need to extend it since it's already city property, mm -hmm. or if it's private property and how we might be able to work something out. I don't know how the, the planning department feels about this. We haven't mm -hmm. discussed it, so mm -hmm. I need to start that conversation. Would, I had one more question. If we did have this meeting on January 4th, which we seem inclined to do, uh, is broad book broad work Coalition already invited to that as a, as a butter and the, and the move button. I don't believe the Broadway yeah. Coalition owns the land. Well, they're, they're stewards of the land. Stewards. Okay. I'm just thinking if, that if there are any butters to this portion of the land that Mr. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's fine. I'm just thinking that that if there were a butter in the ferry, which it sounds like there might not be any action, we would invite them at the same time doing that discussion for the public hearing. I'm sure the City Conservation Commission will show up, okay. since it is their property. Okay. Or at least a representative of the, com okay. the commission. All right. So, what time would we like to meet on January the 4th? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Okay. So, you got that date? January 4th, 9 a.m.? I don't get up that early. <laughs> 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 the good news is is that Ned is going to talk to the um, uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability, and um, and they there will be another step taken in this direction. Is that pretty much sum it up? That's correct. Sounds okay. good to me. Anything? You want me to gather up my junk here and get out of your way? Um, do we want to put it out there? No. It's all stuff we can find at the registry. We're right. all set. Right. Uh, if you need to refer back to any of these drawings, or not, the only one that I don't know if everybody in the had seen was uh, this one here. That, that says it's a public way? Yeah, it says it's a public way. I think okay. everybody's seen that, right? Yes, we did. Okay. All right. Thank you.
you. Thank you for coming. Contract for diesel. Yeah, it's right here. Is it? Oh, okay. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Contract for diesel electric generator to Kingsley Power Systems in the amount of fifty-five thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. Move approval. Second. Um, as you realize, we have a temporary. Uh, Rental uh, backup generator, excuse me, down at the wastewater treatment plant providing emergency power as needed. Uh, that was done underneath the emergency procurement for under $10,000. Once you realize that this is going to be a more long term process to go through, we have to go through this formal process to actually uh, procure a, a more long term rental agreement. We put it out to bid. We had uh, two responses one from United Rentals. For seventy-two hundred dollars a month, or for a total of ninety thousand seven hundred forty dollars, and the low bidder was Kinsley Power Systems out of uh, Connecticut at four thousand six hundred and ten dollars a month, for a total of fifty-five thousand three hundred twenty dollars. Uh, this will give us time to determine what process we're going to go down in the future, as far as long-term uh, power needs, permanent backup power, so on. So what, what's the time period? Of one year. One year. Yep. And so one was almost twice as much as the other. And the new generator, my understanding, is about $120,000, $125,000. Mm -hmm. So we need to get into a rental agreement in the interim period while we figure this out. Mm -hmm. But also there's some other things going on inside of the city of backup power needs through um, an energy resiliency project that's ongoing mm -hmm. uh, through the um, central services. And Thanks for your attention, folks. Um, I don't mean to inter like said, interrupt this is you. Thank 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 you. Uh, in that period of time also. It's a good generator, just has some issues that need to be looked at and worked at because the replacement was an estimated $3.3 million for the switch gear and the generator down there. So if we are able to make the city for a year, we, um, may, are we uh, required to, to pay the whole year's? No, it's by the month. Oh, by the month, okay, great. Any other questions from anybody? Um, Jim will ask that this be tabled tonight. Yeah, we're, we're, we're waiting for some additional backup from the contractor on, uh, on the break time for the change order, so we'll, we'll bring it uh, before the board at the next meeting. Okay. Change order number one to contract number 18513 to tie in bond for phase four design and permitting in the amount of $29,200. Move approval. Second. I'm going to refuse okay. myself. Change order on phase four rental closure construction costs. Time bond is to provide construction management services for the city on this particular project. They've incurred some additional uh, costs because of um, uh, an extended uh, construction schedule. The uh, contractor has taken roughly about five additional weeks to complete the project versus what the original construction schedule was. So they've uh, time bond has had or construction observer on, on site that's incurred some additional time. We've had additional pay applications and paperwork um, from their contract administrator in their office um, because of that uh, contract extension in the schedule. And uh, there was also a small amount of that money was related to some additional uh, design modification that was necessary because of a, a field condition change that we found at the Pineal project. So, um, the total sum of these uh, 
Additional services is $29,200. Okay, any questions? Yes. Does the, is there an accounting of the contractor for? There's a liquidated damages clause in the contract, which we will be pursuing. Okay. And we expect that that might cover our additional costs for tag and tag? Not all of us. It won't cover all of them. Part what of portion do you think? Um, it might cover a quarter of it. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, change order number three to contract number 20413 to wastewater treatment plant electrical testing protocol and observation. Oh, wait a minute, Chris, I don't want to go get it. <laughs> Could you get me a copy of the agenda, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. A little uh, union break there, Mike. <laughs> we, just for purposes of information, we did pass it. Change order number three to contract number 20413. For wastewater treatment plant electrical testing protocol and observation to Kleinfelder in the amount of nothing because it's a contract extension to December 31st, 2013. Just to pay, we right, have an invoice. So it's a time extension only. Okay. The work's been completed at this point. The report's been submitted to DEP as part of our consent order. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really a formality to pay the bill. Do we need to have a vote on this? There was no need to approve. Would anybody like to move to approve? I, I move we approve it. Second. Okay. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Storm water and flood control update. The board is mired in a series of ward meetings with city council <laughs> mired across, across the city. Exciting things are happening. Um, there were two meetings this week. Uh, the first one was at the Bridge Street School. There was one last evening at the YMCA. Um, Terry, uh, our illustrious chair, has been making a presentation. Um, two residents that have come to the meetings. Um, Jim Dostal, if you haven't seen it, um, recently completed a video with NCTV providing a seven-minute overview of what the city's flood control system is like. So it's, a, I think, a nice piece for people to see and, and get an understanding of what the flood control system is all about and why work needs to be done on it. So the, the meetings have been have been well attended, I think, in my opinion. Um, a lot of good questions from residents, um, a lot of good discussion, a fair amount of support, it seems, for the draft ordinance as it, as it is. So um, things are going well. There are two meetings left. Um, I don't have the dates in front of me. There's one at the Ryan Road School and one at the Florence Civic Center coming up. Uh, 14th and 17th. So those will be, those will be coming up uh, shortly, and then you know, the process will continue with the City Council. But we're, I guess, basically helping them with their community outreach, and it's been, it's been good. I'm, I'm pleased with it. I have to say, uh, I'm just going to make a comment here, that I, first of all, I thought the film was, the film was wonderful. I, I tried to send him, Jim, an email. I think I must have an old address. Can you send me an email? Yeah. And um, the film really added an aspect of professionalism that was really, I thought, highlighted specific issues, plus involved people being able to look at something while, because it is a tedious subject for some people, and yet it added a great, uh, a great way to visualize what was happening. But the whole presentation was really good. Terry was great at get. There were some interesting questions, but and he had to field those, and he did, I mean, a, a, as usual, a good job. But I just thought it was the, the presentation itself was really, really wonderful. And David. One, one uh, thing that I got out of the first hearing was that some of the individual property owners wanted to know what classification they came under. And they, I could tell from the conversation that they, they were very vague about plugging their view of their house into the 
formula, whether you know, small, medium, or large. Is there any way that the, that could be spelled out? For individual, asked for individual for? properties? No. I think at this point it would just take too much time and effort to respond to individual requests for the understanding what their bills are. Um, if people have a general sense of the footprint of their home and the size of their driveway, they can, they can figure out where they're going to be in those tiers, which are 2,000 square feet of impervious, 2,000 to 4,000, or greater than 4,000. Um, so if you've got a general sense of your property, you can figure out how you're going to fit in so you get an idea of what your bill is. Right. Well, I realize you, you could do that, but if you if you had gotten that far, you wouldn't have the question. <laughs> and, and a lot of people just haven't thought it through or haven't been exposed to it. Yeah, I mean, one gentleman came up to me at the end of the first meeting and he asked, well, what's the rate? If it's a $2 million budget, what's the rate? He says, I'm going to, he was with our condominium complex. He says, I'm going to go back, figure out what our impervious area is so I can get an approximate idea of what our bill is. So he was clearly, he says, if you just give me the dollars per square foot, he says, I'll figure out the rest of it. So I think it's, the map is easy, designed to be easy, uh, but we're hesitant to, uh, to respond to individual requests because there could be thousands of them. Right. Well, I didn't know what the change your form your data would be. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Well, that's we'll get another second page has, around. Uh, ex recused himself from the discussion, but, in, but uh, inadvertently. The pen is mightier than Chris. <laughs> um, I also I, I attend the. Um, the briefing for Ward 2 last night, which I thought I can um, Terry did a remarkable job as he always does. Um, I think, though, that uh, the question that, that, that Dave raised is, is a good one, and because I think that um, the people who showed up are all clearly already invested in the process. They get it. Um, so they're smarter than the average bear. Um, but even they, I think, don't have any understanding of the order of magnitude of burden that's going to fall on X, Y, and Z. And that if we could come up with even a back-of-the-envelope sort of estimate for one family, two family, and I, I, I know we've already done that, but we do it in the form of a spreadsheet or a handout that they don't really get. And just say that your bill could be in this ballpark. Um, I think that while we don't want to commit ourselves to that, and, and, and we, we probably have to language it very carefully, um, because they, they I, I think, I think the majority of, of citizens don't understand the difference between, you know, 10, 20, 200, 2,000. They, they just, they don't know where it falls on the spectrum. And so, you know, when, when uh, we say to them, it's going to be $160 broken up over quarterly, so it's a $25 bill, which is, I think, what Terry said the other night. Uh, or, or, you know, not, uh, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but I, I don't know that they actually heard that. I think they're really concerned about this just staggering burden because they hear the, what they hear is the two million. They don't hear how it's going to, you know, fall down on their on their own heads. And Do we sign um, this, please. Don't if there was a way to reassure them, I guess that's the word I'm looking for, that, mm -hmm. that, that it's not the sky is falling kind of numbers, um, that would be really useful. We've had some residents, David, that have, that have asked us uh, you know, how to help them how to, how to calculate mm -hmm. the bill, right. which is... Again, the process is pretty straightforward, and we can show people how to be, how it can be done, but we just don't want to do it for every property. Right. 
But if, but if you could have a piece of paper for the small, you know, typical small house and, and dimensions and multiply and okay. add it up, and just so that they would see. <coughs> it really can, is simple once we, you see it. We can do some sample. Yeah, sample. We can do some samples. So if your house looks like this, you know, you, you get a house like mine, a little one with a tiny driveway, it's about this. Yeah. If you've got a longer driveway, a bigger house, you have a two-car garage, exactly. you're going to be in this. Yeah. We, can, we can do some like that. I, I think that would be monumentally helpful. Really would. Because people are going, because, you know, we give them this great um, GPS photo of, of, you know, your impervious roof. And they go, I don't know what that means. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a good-looking piece of property, but... Um, but if we, if, if we can boil it down to, you know, I live at X, you know, address, and my property is the average of that neighborhood, um, and let's pick the high end, you know, and um, people will go, okay, that part I get, that yeah. part I get. Right. There so, was, there was oh, a gentleman at uh, the first... Uh, Forum that that's said how much how much is uh, my my typical water bill and Terry said well, something like five hundred dollars and I said well compared to sixty one what are we wasting our time for <laughs> I think the idea of examples is a great one just yeah. as long as there's disclaimers on there that these are just examples sure. uh, yeah absolutely and and I I go so far as to say use my house mm -hmm. you know this is my house. Not your house, but David, <laughs> <laughs> what we can do is work on those and get them posted. Mine today, hers after the divorce. For the next, for the next meeting. Yeah, sure. No, that would thank help. you. Um, All right. Anything else? Private ways. The process continues. Um, surveyors are out picking up information on various private ways to create plans for approval. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back from Alan Sewell, the city solicitor. We have three streets right now ready to move the city council for street acceptance. Um, just need to know what what vehicle he's going to use, whether it's an order taking or easement. That's what I haven't heard yet. But um, I was hoping that we would get these three streets done by the end of the year, but it might be the end of January. So we're moving along. Seems to me that that the planning board is is the plan is the primary uh, determination, or it should be the primary determination of that situation at bottom floor. I think it's it's more their issue than our issue. But that's just my opinion. What because of the um, because of because of the the long undeveloped section of property that the, that the driveway passes through on the way to one house uh, and opening that up you know for development basically which, which they which the residents originally at the first hearing said they did not want. There was no mention of it by then tonight then. No, no. They may have done the math. Any thoughts on that? Okay. Do we do we have an opinion from the planning board? We there? do. No and, recommendation. And no <laughs> recommendation. So I think there's. Well, maybe we're on our own. Maybe we could go back to them because we, in the, in the sense that we have to go back and have a hearing. Okay. Congratulations on Plonsky Park. And Congratulations to the whole city. Yay! Yeah. 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 But it was a very nicely written proposal. Yeah, yeah of course. We can find one too. Yeah, that's true. I mean, thank you. Um, the, uh, for the board members to have it, where the CPA committee uh, awarded a grant for the uh, renovation design for Pulaski Park. So it was a big, a big moment, um, I think, for the city as a whole. The, um, the grant application was, was solidly supported by the mayor's office, yeah, which I think made a big, big difference um, in the, um, I, I 
I guess in the in the approval of the grant ultimately, but just the mayor is very supportive of that project. Um, Terry and Roe would come out to a couple of meetings um, with the CPC and lended the board support to the overall application. Of course, it was submitted on behalf of the board. Um, and there's a long history there of uh, public involvement trying to figure out what to do with the park. So it was pretty exciting, actually. So the money will be used to hire uh, Stephen Stimson Associates, who is the firm that the board had selected um, quite a while back to do the design. <clears throat> Stimson was great. They came to a couple of meetings and provided really good information. They came to the last meeting and answered lots of questions that the CPC had. And I think it was just really beneficial to help uh, them understand the magnitude of the cost because the, the grant was 194500 if I remember correctly. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of money. Um, the budget for the reconstruction is about $1.5 million is, is uh, what's being discussed at the moment. And that, that may be subject to going up or down a little bit depending on what the ultimate plan is. But it's a lot of money. And I felt like the CPC had a lot of really good questions about the project. I, I felt like they were really, really good group. They did a lot of, of due diligence in trying to fully understand what it meant, why, why the costs were what they were, what the public involvement would be, what the schedule would be. I mean, there were a lot of really good questions. So um, ultimately, it was great to get the grant. But it was, I, I found it good just to watch them work actually to see how closely they're and how seriously they're taking their role in what they do for the city. So it was good overall, very exciting. Um, the schedule probably will be um, the beginning of the next calendar year, I think February for the start of design. So it might be uh, January or February we'll have a design contract in front of the board for review and approval. So yeah, that's good news. Are there any ideas about how we would fundraise? Is the thought that it would be a fundraising proposition or that there might, I know that there's a chance that there might be some state monies out there for the um, building of it once the design is complete. Will that be sufficient or will, it have, or will we have to do some searching? I think it's going to be... It would be a good question for the mayor, right, not for the yeah, city engineer. Yeah. But um, I think ultimately it would be a combination of state grant money, CPA money, and possibly general fund money um, to get the whole capital funding together so you can do the project at once. I think that's the mayor's desire as well, to figure out what the plan is, get the funding in place, and renovate the park at once. I mean, before CPA money was available, um, for construction, there was definitely a lot of discussion about, you know, how can we fundraise, can we do little pieces of the project renovation, you know, renovate the park in little pieces. And I think there's some uh, benefits to doing the whole thing at once. So I think that's the plan, and, and I believe that's what the mayor supports as well. So uh, it will be a combination of those things. It's exciting. It is. It's good. Long time coming. Is Simpson going to discuss possibilities uh, with the public? Yeah, I believe, yeah. Um, a big part of uh, the CPC's questions were related to public input uh, in getting uh, people in the community to have, uh, I guess, basic ownership into what the ultimate plan is going to be. So they had a lot of questions about that. Um, Stimson has a lot of good ideas. There will be a public process to get updated information. This board did a great job four years ago. So it's, you know, we know what, we've got a good basis of information, but getting more updated input will be valuable. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I don't think we, at the time, we talked about anything like wireless, which might be a component of the, of the park. So, you know, there might be other issues that, that uh, might be relevant there. Right. Uh, Gary, do you have anything in your mind? Yeah. Chris. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm all set. All set, thank you. Nothing. I'm good. I'm good. Oh my goodness, but I know we didn't set a record with that. But it was your own record you were trying to do. <laughs> no, I wasn't trying to do it. There's no she pressure. She really wants to make money. Yeah, okay. Not okay. good. Okay. Move to uh, adjourn. We had it. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>